Get the old barista going here. Try to stay motivated during the day. Do you guys want a coffee? Are you good? Do you want this one? Because the truth of the matter is, I did so much espresso during COVID that I realized I can't drink it after 12 o'clock and sleep through the night. All the music that really speaks to me, the bass is such a prominent part of it, but it's so subtly prominent. I love that it's kind of quietly supporting everybody else. As a general worldview, I think there's some something profound in that, you know, where you're not forcing people to be what you think they should be, you're supporting what they are. The more I think about this project and how it, how it relates to the musicians on the project, I feel like it's been a way for me to create an opportunity to showcase their talents while I can just be supportive of that. Yeah, I think I probably did spend about 10 hours a day in this room during COVID. Which, you know, everybody's got a COVID story, you know? We, had, we consumed a lot of music in this room just on that speaker. It's weird. We played a lot of chess. I mean, I suck, but, but, but we did what we could, you know? Yeah, we'd get our Bobby Fischer on, my wife and I, and and she would kick my ass. That was fun, passing the time that way. So yeah, the instrumentation is full rhythm section, bass, guitar, drums, piano, two trombones, two trumpets, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone, bass clarinet, and flute, a cornucopia of musicians from the scene been lucky enough to play with all these years I always think of this great John Steinbeck book called um, East of Eden and in the book he talks about how he was able to express all of the most important things in his worldview in this book. That really stuck with me in it. I needed something of this magnitude, but this many musicians kind of under one roof to kind of maybe get at some of these ideals in the music that are truly important to me. That's the, that's the artwork. Kind of provided a way to think about all the people that I had developed relationships with over the years and to kind of uh, imagine them in the room. When you develop uh, bonds with other musicians, you develop pretty special you know, relationships. I thought it would be cool to just think of a, of a project that would bring all these people together, all these people, um, that I've been lucky enough to play with, you know, over the last 20 plus years, they kind of function as a, <laughs> as a lifeline, you know. I think like most people, there was definitely this kind of overwhelming sense of, of isolation and, you know, kind of thinking about uh, how, you know, your friends were doing and how your family members were doing and um, so it just it kind of was a way for me to always be thinking about them I don't even 
think there are any bass solos. There are no bass solos on the record, but that, I mean, that is kind of by design. It's also just my worldview. I've just never thought of it as a solo slash me first kind of a thing. I've always thought of it as how can I make the person I'm playing with be their best, sound their best? How can I just say yes to their thing, just non-judgmentally? and support their thing. Everything that I wrote for each person was so specifically written for them. One thing that comes to mind is that Jeff Bradfield plays um, bass clarinet on the whole project. And I don't have any bass clarinet solos, but he's one of my very favorite uh, tenor saxophonists and soprano saxophonists. And so I wrote one of the tunes as a soprano saxophone feature. I couldn't make my ear hear the piece in any other way. And I've, I've been playing with Jeff for 25 years and just that sound is so, it's inseparable from the way that I hear music at this point. You know, like on pedals, trombone player Joel Adams plays a solo on that. Um, same kind of thing where I've been playing in his band, the Chicago Yes Tet since 2007. I could just kind of go down the line. When I think about the contribution of each person, everybody has a very specific place in the music. I do think it's hard to, you know, to get kind of flowery and ethereal about it. therapeutic to lay out this sort of challenge for myself I just said I'm totally in a foreign territory I'm just gonna try it not judge it and and just try to uh, hone in on what feels uh, honest to me and then I'll fix the details later <laughs> I felt lucky to be this close to the lake and spent a lot of time down there, for sure. That was pretty pretty much a daily thing. I mean, even in the winter, it was like, all right, we'll just, we'll just get bundled up and we'll, you know, we'll just walk down there. And we would walk all the way down to the lighthouse. That was a really big part of sanity maintenance, just kind of getting out and um, just trying to stay somewhat connected with nature, I mean, to the extent that you can, and sort of a city center. I think everybody was grasping for some, some modicum of connecting with people. I think we perhaps took that for granted and I think I did. I just thought, oh, this is what it is, and this is always going to be what it is. And then, and then you're like, well, it's gone now. And I think we were in here for three or four months before we saw anybody in person that wasn't on a Zoom call or a phone call. So that was sort of the positive fruit that came out of that that uh, period, you know. And I was glad to be inspired by the community in that way. And I really wanted to, um, yeah, almost almost honor them in a way. For each one of them, I, I have been able to be lucky enough to um, play in their projects and record with them. And this was a little bit of a way to sort of pay it forward. Like it's always been about sort of being on that, that journey of discovery. The kind of thrill that comes with learning something and expressing that. In, a, in, an, in an honest way. And so I would just try to see what I could do with just allowing myself to just do it. Do it now and ask questions later is kind of how I thought of it. Anytime you come at something with an open heart and you're, you're not so guarded or you're, you have some modicum of humility, I think people want to help. They want to help you figure it out. If I had an asset, it would be maybe that, that I just have, I've just always said, yes. If I'm not good at this, how can I get better at it? 
You're kind of thinking about ways to fill that void with the memories that you had, that you've built up with the community that, that you had. In any way that you could, you're trying to rekindle that. You're thinking, God, why did I take that for granted? Every gig is a, a precious opportunity to make music with these people and to relish their idiosyncratic, you know, differences and and to um, celebrate that. It was a moment to think about what was important and how to, how to move forward and how to sort of be even more in touch with uh, seizing a moment and not taking any relationships for granted. Leading more with gratitude. It's like you don't always get a chance to stop and think about why you're doing this. What about it is enlivening your existence and this really it provided that opportunity to to kind of look in the mirror and just say you know yeah this it's this mm -hmm.